Hi, if like me, you've been using Microsoft Endpoint Manager for some time, and you've got lots of content, lots of profiles and settings you've built up in your Microsoft Endpoint Manager, then at some point you might be looking to back this up. There's lots of people in the community that looked at different ways of doing this. The most common really is creating PowerShell scripts and using the Graph API. You've also got others that have created distinct modules and applications that are hosted and run from Azure. We're going to have a look at these today and actually see it working. I want to start by introducing the uh, Brad Wyatt blog page here, uh, or AKA the Lazy Administrator. There's a great worth of PowerShell scripts on here which relate to Intune deployment or Azure and I've used this many times even when it comes to deploying to customer customer platforms. They're worth having a look at and try them out. Brad wrote this a little while ago but basically it refers to a PowerShell module from Jay Serdan or to quote his real name John Serdan. Now there are a number of prerequisites here and they include um, installing the Azure AD module, the MS Graph function module, um, the actual Intune backup and restore module which John Serdan has written and then basically you're going to be using the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Graph in order to connect into your tenant. So if I quickly give you an overview of that, for anyone unfamiliar with the Microsoft Graph Microsoft Graph, as it says here, is the gateway to data int and intelligence in Microsoft 365. It allows you to query your data, extract data, and um, it's a model that you can use to access um, all your information. So basically, this is the way that John Serdan has written his PowerShell scripts. It will hook into the, um, the REST APIs that are available in order to gain information from your tenant. So when you import the um, the graph module and you will initially need to connect into graph and when you do that you authenticate using your Intune tenant admin permissions. In order to do that you will be uh, asked to authenticate and then also accept the permissions to allow the module to gain access to your data as it shows on the screen here. Once you've achieved that, you can then go ahead and, and run the command lets so basically within the, the, the PowerShell scripts in order to access all your settings, all your policies, and allow them to back them up. So what, what would this give you? So the Intune Backup and Restore module will allow you to back up your full configuration as, it, as you can see, there's a long list of policies there as an example. It'll, you'll need to do, define specifically where you're going to back them up to. And it also gives you the ability to do a comparison of Intune backup files. So it may be in a production environment that you've already backed up your, your environment, your settings, and then someone come, else comes along and changes those settings or adds new policies. Um, in, when you achieve that, you may want to do a comparison just to see where the individual settings have been changed and this will allow you to do that too. But please note, in this video today we're not going to be going through the uh, the comparison um, and also it also gives you the ability to uh, do a restore, a restore your Intune backup into your tenant. So if you suddenly decided you want to clear everything out or you want to restore all of these policies into a different tenant, you can do that, but I'm not going to be covering this in this session. I'll do that in a separate session. So what we're going to do is we're going to head into PowerShell and we're going to go through the prerequisites and show this working. So let's start up the PowerShell uh, console here. I'm going to run the PowerShell ISE and I'm also going to run it as an administrator. You'll need to do that in order to um, run the modules. I 
I've already created um, all the uh, commands you need to run so I'll open that called it Intune Backup Commands and then you go I've got a set of commands here that we're going to go through so we do the prerequisites first you need to as I said before install the Azure AD module the MS graph functions the Intune Backup and Restore module itself um, some of the commands uh, within MS graph have been migrated so we're going to in install the uh, Microsoft graph Intune module we're then going to do a quick update of the backup and restore module to make sure we've got the latest version after we've done that we can run through um, setting up the the permissions to allow you to uh, import those modules and we're going to connect to the graph um, import the actual backup and restore module itself before we then run the backup so let's go through all of those and I'll do it one at a time now I've already um, installed these so you won't necessarily see all the pop-up screens that will uh, you, you will if you're doing this from scratch and what it will do is it will give you an option to um, agree um, yes or no to install them so you'll need to hit yes and all the prompts that come up on the screen so we're going to install the MS graph functions then the actual Intune backup and restore module itself all of these are connecting over the internet in order to install in your local PC Then we're going to install the Microsoft Graph module. Um, and then finally we're going to update the Intune Backup and Restore module to make sure we've got the latest version. Now that is finished, um, what we have to do in order to import these modules, we have to make sure that we have uh, the, the 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 appropriate rights in order to do that so there's a command here that you can run it will set the execution policy uh, to remote signed and that will allow you to run them it'll ask you to um, hit yes you can hit yes to all on all of these and now what we're going to do is actually import the modules into memory so we can actually run them while this session is running okay that's complete I'm also gonna import the um, Intune backup and restore to make sure we've got that into memory as well and then we're going to connect to the graph okay so at this point you would be prompted to um, agree to the terms and conditions to allow the modules to gain access to your Intune Intune tenant. It'll ask you for your um, uh, your admin sign in. And then it will prompt you for your user ID, uh, your password. So that I'm now connected into my tenant, my specific tenant, which as you can see here is um, uh, labeled by my actual user ID on my on Microsoft.com address. Last thing we're gonna do here is actually start off the Intune um, backup and restore modules which is actually going to take all of the settings and modules, all the settings and policies, and as it's as it says here, it's going to uh, download and copy them into an Intune Backup 2 folder locally on my PC. Now, as these go, uh, as this uh, goes through all the the functions within the module, you'll see 
that all of these settings are now being uh, downloaded from my Intune tenant on the internet in the cloud and it's copying them locally. So we've got all the applications that I've uh, configured within my tenant. The assignments, it's got the client app assignments to these. It's now going through, I've got some settings catalog or um, configured within my tenant. So it's actually backed those up. We've got compliance policies. We've got device configuration policies. There's a number of those. The assignments to those uh, device configuration. We've got some scripts. So we've got some uh, scripts that we've added, uh, device management scripts. And then we've got the assignments to those two. So not only are you getting the actual settings as well, but you're getting the assignments. And in a second, when this finishes, I'll go back into my tenant. I'll show you, uh, just show you the, the long list of, um, of policies that I've got just to show you that it's working. Okay, so if I have a quick look at this, you've got the uh, device configuration policies. You've got BitLocker with TPM, BitLocker without TPM. If I go into my tenant, and have a look at that. I can look at the configuration profiles. And as, as I just mentioned, you've got BitLocker with TPM, BitLocker without, without TPM version 2. Now, what it will do, it will add into the, into the specific folder that you named. Um, it used the environment uh, variable so I'm logged on as Andy J um, and it goes into your app data local temp Intune backup. Actually, it goes into app data in this specific app data local temp. And then we've got the Intune backup too. So here you have it. You have all of that, uh, your environment set up. It's now been backed up and you've got a reference to how you configured your Intune tenant. Which is, if I drill down, you can see that they're all uh, saved as JSON files, uh, including the, uh, the assignments too. So all the uh, scripts deploy a copy the settings and they output them to JSON files. And these are the input files that will uh, eventually be used if you do want to restore your uh, restore your your settings so I just want to quickly show you how you might export individual policies uh, from inside the Microsoft Endpoint Manager if I click on devices and then compliance policies I've got the option here to hit the export so if I hit export and then download I'm going to get a file downloaded to my local machine and then obviously I can open that and I can look at the details. The difference here is that the PowerShell scripts are obviously giving you an automated way uh, to do the administration across your, your settings and profiles. And that's the purpose of this really. So you can quickly run a PowerShell script that will give you that, that, that benefit. The other thing I wanted to quickly show you is actually the blog that's written by John Serdam. So if you head over to the Modern Workplace blog, there's details here of how he set this, uh, this module up, um, the original post features, um, the backup options, restore options, etc. And how you might set that up. So go ahead and have a look at that. Um, there's some really good info. The second thing I wanted to quickly show you is another version or a different way of how you might achieve this automation. And this is uh, a, an ASP.NET application written by Nicholas Suter. It's a great tool uh, and I'll show you in a second how, uh, how it works. But effectively, he's created this application that is hosting in Azure and you can quickly, very quickly, uh, download your, your environment and back it up. 
he's got a github site uh, with all the details so go ahead and have a look at that as well uh, there's more information on that site um, but this is the actual tool so as you can see it's a web page you sign in with your admin account or your uh, Intune admin credentials here and once you do that you'll have the ability to export import um, and the different versions of, of details that you want to collect here. Um, by hitting the export, you'll be exporting your, uh, your whole environment, which is really good. The other option is that you've got uh, conditional access. Now, the John Surden option doesn't back up your conditional access. So this is uh, a different different option if you want to actually do that and there's also a way of getting documentation which would document your your conditional access details the other powerful thing just before we finish on this is it also gives you the ability to go and host this yourself because obviously if you have any uh, compliance or security issues with running this across um, Nicholas Suter's hosted application and, and obviously you want to introduce this into a, a, a process uh, on your business then you may not trust this and you may want to host it yourself. The main reason why I didn't actually demonstrate this today is because I know that there'll be some people that are a little bit nervous about taking this approach and also to be honest with you when I ran it myself I did get an error an authorization error uh, so it wasn't actually possible for me to demonstrate so that's it for this video obviously we've been through a demonstration of how you might back up your Intune environment we didn't go through the the restore uh, for features but please look out for that in future videos and there are other alternatives out there so if you come across another one by all means drop me a message and we can look to do a video on that too if you find it useful thanks very much please subscribe and we'll see you again soon